Now from CBS 4 News, this is Facing South Florida with Jim DeFeedy. Good morning. I'm Rick Fulbaum and welcome to Facing South Florida. Jim DeFeedy is off this week. And today on Facing South Florida, we focus on the upcoming special election for Florida District 40. District 40 includes West Miami Dade, Kendall, the Hammocks, the Falls, and Westchester, Richmond Heights. I'll be hosting a debate this half hour between the two main candidates facing off for the chance to represent District 40 in the State Senate in Tallahassee. Republican Jose Felix Diaz, an attorney who has served in the State House of Representatives since 2010. He resigned his seat in order to run for this particular office. And the Democrat Annette Tadeo, who is former chair of the Democratic Party of Miami-Dade, vice chair of the Florida Democratic Party, and committee woman for the DNC. And we are grateful to have both of you here. We're going to try to cover as much ground as we can over the next half hour so that the voters of your district will have all the information that they need when they go to the polls on September 26th. You have both agreed to the format of today's debate. There will be no opening statements. I will be asking the questions, and I will allow a reasonable amount of time for rebuttals and responses. You are invited to engage with each other, with each other, but let's try to keep it on topic. And then there'll be a closing statement at the end, 90 seconds at the end of this debate. I'll be getting time cues from my producer to make sure that everybody's getting equal time. And there are so many issues facing the voters in District 40, so let's get right to it. Uh, we should mention that a coin toss was held in Etadeo 1. That means that you will get the last word. You'll be able to deliver your opening, your closing statement uh, second. But that also means that you, Mr. Diaz, get the first question. So let's start with health care. Uh, and it looks as though uh, Obamacare, at least for the time being, is here to stay. Uh, we know that uh, there are more enrollments in Obamacare here in South Florida than, and in the state of Florida than anywhere else in the country. And so this is an issue that is of great importance, even as lawmakers in Washington try to tackle exactly what to do. We know that some Republicans in Washington have been looking for ways to give the states more control over the health care dollars that are spent uh, in their particular states. And so and we also know that Governor Scott is against expanding Medicaid here in the state of Florida. So what way specifically would you work to make sure that your constituents have access to the care that they need? Well, uh, first of all, thank you for having me on the program. It's, it's an honor to be here. And I've actually had the honor of representing this community for the past seven years, and health care has been an important topic. Uh, this district, like you mentioned, uh, it's like any district in Miami-Dade. You have everything from the very wealthy to the lower middle class. So there are a lot of hardworking families in my district, and I've been fighting for them already in Tallahassee. Specifically, um, I've championed the expansion of kid care and Medicaid to immigrant kids in our community, an effort that took almost four years to pass, and most people did not think would ultimately pass, but I generally believe in helping those that need help the most, uh, like kids, the disabled, and the elderly. That's why I believe that thoughtful expansion of Medicaid makes a lot of sense. The plans that you referenced at the federal level um, are part of a large negotiation, which our state is not part of. We get to play a lot of defense with what happens at the federal government, uh, but we are looking at potentially having more state-driven solutions, government uh, that's closest to the people is best, and our state has an opportunity, like we do with the low-income pool funding, to get money directly from the federal government and use it the best way we can to help people uh, in their time of need. Mr. Dale, you would be going to Tallahassee as a Democrat. You would be working with the minority, uh, and I'm just wondering how exactly you could foresee navigating that uh, as you try to, again, the same question, pr make sure that your constituents in District 40 would have the access to the health care that they need. Well, listen, for me, uh, health care is something very personal. I actually was born with a pre-existing condition. Um, I have, I was born with a cleft lip, and I've experienced now a pre-existing condition also with my daughter when she was in the hospital for a long time, and we found out she had a kidney issue that she was born with that we didn't know about. So, I mean, for me, this is, this is personal. So I would go to Tallahassee, first of all, to expand Medicaid. We need to do that. For the longest time, uh, we have not done that, and we keep being promised that it's going to happen when people are in elections. They somehow uh, see the light, but we have not. Uh, my opponent voted for HB 1193, which is a bill that essentially dismantled Obamacare. That is not what we need in Florida. As you said, we have a great deal of people that have health care now because of Obamacare in South Florida specifically, number one in the country. But I'll go even further. Um, my opponent went to, to Washington in February to lobby 
for the repeal and the replace of Obamacare. That is not what we need representing us. We need somebody that's actually going to say that we need to have the coverage, we need to expand Medicaid. One million Floridians would get that coverage if we expanded, and we have not done that. Um, and I know that uh, Governor Scott has at times promised he would yes. do it, but he has not. And, and in the Senate, Representative Diaz, let we me have know, we had rebut, right? bipartisan support okay. to expand Medicaid. Thank you very much. Representative Diaz, what, why don't you respond? Yeah, two simple rebuttals. Uh, one is there was a bill that was referenced that allegedly dismantled Obamacare. A state cannot dismantle anything, uh, so I'm not even sure what that means. But secondly, uh, a visit to Washington to advocate for anything uh, relating to Obamacare uh, simply did not happen. I did not advocate for anything um, that had to do with dismantling Obamacare. I was part of a trip to D.C. to talk about multiple federal issues uh, with our U.S. Senators, mm -hmm. both uh, Bill Nelson and Marco Rubio. And uh, Ms. Tadeo was not present at that meeting, so uh, uh, unless she has uh, psychic powers or I, some sort of special, special. All right, I want to move on, but, but since, it, since yes. the psychic powers line, I'm going to have to let you respond I am basing this on the agenda that was published uh, from Marco Rubio's office, mm. uh, where clearly uh, a big part of the meeting was uh, the repeal and replace of Obamacare. Okay, I want to talk about schools and education, uh, Ms. Tadeo. Let me start with you, because House Bill 7069. Uh, which the governor has signed into law, expands charter schools here in the state of Florida. Supporters say that it will give parents more choice when it comes to where they send their children to school. They say the charter schools are uh, better able, though, to meet the needs of students. These are supporters, since they operate sort of outside of the bureaucracy of the traditional school system, public school system. So what do you say to those in District 40 who support House Bill 7069? Well, I would say that I would not have voted for it, and as a matter of fact, I would join the school board, which just this week of Miami-Dade County decided to join in the lawsuit, overwhelmingly uh, supporting that they should join in the lawsuit because this is wrong. Listen, these are for-profit schools that are making a profit over our kids' education. My daughter goes to public school. It is not okay for us to move any funds from our kids' education. They deserve to have have a full, that's the one equalizer that we have in this country is education. They deserve to have a full and quality education. Listen, this goes way back mm -hmm. to when um, my opponent voted to gut $1.3 billion with Rick Scott from education. We're still feeling the effects of that. And now we get this. So mm -hmm. absolutely, I would be an advocate for public funds to go to public schools, not to for-profit institutions. Mr. Diaz. Thank you. And, and there's a lot to rebut there. First of all, uh, on the last comment, I, I think it's fair that I rebut the meeting with Marco Rubio, an agenda was discussed that referenced a health care conversation, which I was not part of because I did not get to that meeting until dinner once that conversation was over, and even then it only said health care, not dismantling Obamacare. But anyhow, on this topic, I am a big advocate for public school education. My wife was a public school teacher. My mom just retired from the public school system after 28 years. My aunt is a public school teacher. So I've been working with the public school system hand in hand, and you could uh, speak to Superintendent Carvalho and to the members of the Miami-Dade School Board about my work with them to bring money back to our district and the budgets that I voted for that have historically funded public school education. As for 7069, the bill in question, uh, there were elements of that bill that had to do with charter school, but there were also elements of that bill that had to do specifically with helping kids with developmental disabilities and the Gardner Scholarship, giving almost $30 million to those kids. There were bonuses for teachers that were rated effective or highly effective. That means that almost 98% of teachers are going to get bonuses for the first time in a long time. And it's not for one year, it's not for two years, but for three years. And finally, there was mandatory recess given to students in schools, something that school advocates have been pushing for for a long time. So there were a lot of good things in this bill um, that I could not vote against. Now, the yep. charter school elements, we could continue the conversation, but that is not the only thing this bill was about. There were a lot of good things. Jose Felix Diaz is a Republican, and Tadeo is the Democrat. We'll have more of our debate right after this.